It's Brett. Uh, welcome to this week's class, Crypto Mastery class. And uh, we're going to unpack the news, go over some charts, talk about what's going on in the crypto markets today and uh, in this week. So I just want to give you guys a quick hello, give you a wave. And those of you who are M3 members, uh, welcome to the uh, live session. Those of you watching on YouTube, if you like the content, hit the like button and subscribe. We've got a lot of great uh, content here that we are going to be sharing with you today and every week, Tuesday at noon Eastern. All right. So let me go ahead and share my screen and let's talk about some news here. And this is interesting. Today, we've all been awaiting, eagerly awaiting the BlackRock approval. Many think that will come on January 8th. Some uh, people are saying only BlackRock gets it. Some people are wondering if they open it up to more people and they all get it. Big question mark. Well, BlackRock just today announced or that new hit the news today anyway, or yesterday, it looks like uh, very late last night, 1130 Eastern, that BlackRock revised its spot ETF um, application and to further increase their chances of success. And so basically their application, their proposal, as it's called, now includes cash redemptions as a concession to the SEC that should improve the fund's approval odds. So we'll unpack this a bit. Uh, by the way, I did get a notice today from Xfinity. They're doing uh, Wi-Fi upgrades in the area. So if I lose you guys, uh, that we'll have to continue later. But hopefully not. It went out for a bit uh, the other day. So anyway, just so you know, if I disappear, that's, uh, you can thank Xfinity for that. All right. Um, Monday, BlackRock filed revised spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund or ETF in a bid to appease regulators. You know, nice move. Nice move right before the wire where the SEC is likely sitting around wondering, what should we do uh, with all these things? And uh, and then BlackRock stuck in an even better bid. I wonder if that's part of the, the overall master plan was kind of wondering, you know, are they going to come in and use their influence to uh, maybe... I just tweaked the volume here a little bit to maybe not get approved, crash the market, come back in and buy a lot of it when it's down. But uh, I don't know. I think there's too much buy pressure and uh, too much of wind in our sails. You know, the winds of change are behind us. And as Victor Hugo said, you cannot stop an idea whose time has come. The ETFs have been pushed off for, you know, years and years. Uh, the spot ETF, uh, those of you that don't know, the difference is the Futures ETF is cash settled, so really does not involve any buying or selling of the uh, Bitcoin and the underlying. It's more of a derivative product. So the the uh, spot, or sorry, the futures Bitcoin ETF marked the exact market top, uh, ironically or by design. That was definitely a sell the news type of event. So I still wonder, will we get a bit of a sell the news type of event uh, when the Bitcoin ETF? does get launched and announced probably going to be january 8th is the date that uh, we are thinking so i would be i would try to be aware and around on january 8th if we start to see markets tanking might be good to lighten the positions not financial advice but lighten positions and wait to see where it bounces and i think they could see a sell-off cause some liquidations i think there's going to be a lot of volatility on that day if it is the eighth, a lot of uh, derivatives traders buying options and the uh, you know people trading perpetual futures on margin. And the markets love to go in and just wipe the table clean, liquidate as many people as they can. So if there's a huge amount of open interest going into this, and a lot of people are long on the Bitcoin futures and long on the BITO, the BIDO, yeah, then, uh, you know, they could have some uh, some air quotes of news come out and scare everybody, cause stop losses to trigger and then liquidations and see a dump. If that happens, I think that would be a great time to uh, get in. That would be a great time to buy in and buy the dip. Um, but as we'll show you here today with our indicators, the crypto mastery indicators, that uh, that's what they're really good at is showing when to buy the dip. Uh, if you're new here, you can find out more about uh, these uh, secret weapons that we use called the crypto mastery indicators. I'll be showing that to you here once we get through with the news and uh, showing you live market conditions. This is also a training for those of you that are using crypto mastery indicators and would like to know a little bit more about how they work and why they work so well. All right. Under the proposed uh, update proposal, BlackRock's ETF, um, this is new. So feature a cash creation and redemption mechanisms. And this is because the SEC favors that. Now, what does that mean? Uh, it doesn't really, I don't know, to be honest. It's um, <clears throat> cash creation, redemption mechanisms. This is kind of new. 
the, all that matters is it's favored by the Security Exchange Commissions. There you go. Some of this news is uh, not really uh, that important to unpack all the way through. Um, cash redemptions just means they could get cash out by selling their ETF. That's what it means. And uh, the alternative, I guess, is different. Um, that's the first time I've heard that term. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. But anyway, if the SEC does approve BlackRock spot ETF, they're saying as early as January. And again, that first week in January is where everybody is lining up their bets. And uh, let's see, BlackRock first applied last month. We don't need to go through all of this. And let's see if it uh, explains this. So cash redemptions. SEC regards a safer, more accessible redemption option, allows people to replace their shares with equivalent cash value. So there you go. And uh, versus an in-kind redemption structure, that's a little different. And apparently that's more uh, less appealing to the SEC, more appealing um, to the ETF holders or the company launching the ETF, obviously. But hey, look, if we want to get out, we want our cash. So there we go. So that's an uh, interesting development there on uh, that Bitcoin BlackRock ETF, spot ETF, just to clarify. Let's see. Um, and I have this news, uh, this up here. I'll just move this over so you can see this as well. This is uh, JP Morgan. Um, <clears throat> I won't play this. Uh, this is, I guess it advanced the video. The video is, let's see, I had a headline here where it said JP Morgan was saying that could it be a sell of the news type of event? And suddenly this thing went away. So um, that was all I wanted to share with you is that uh, JP Morgan saying maybe, maybe it's a sell the news type of event like I noticed or noted a minute ago. Uh, Plan B had an interesting video out, by the way, where he thinks that uh, Bitcoin could still be 135K. Uh, I think we land at between uh, probably around 155K. So uh, that's when my targets on Bitcoin will look at that 100K. Probably assuredly going to hit that 155 and then possibly 210. Plan B has is going to 135. Oh, this is old. Never mind. By 450. But you know, sometimes they're behind an entire cycle. And uh, I won't get into all that, but I think we do hit these higher levels in this cycle. And I think we'll get there faster than people expect. So let's jump over to Coin Telegraph, kind of unpack the news quickly, and then get into the charts. So Bitcoin price balance is 5% as investors saying that the ETF, the spot ETF is a 99.9% .9 done deal. And this is, let's see, what's the date on this article? I, I assume this is from today. Uh, we can just unpack that at the high level. Let's see, Solana price technicals hint at a 40% crash. That's new information. We definitely want to weigh that. You know, the market's been pretty uh, on, it's been on a tear for a while here. So we want to, um, you know, keep an eye on this and uh, kind of make sure that we are aware of all of the possibilities. So let's see, FTX debtors. I wonder if there's anything in here with FTX having to sell um, more of their crypto, possibly affect the market. I think that's been happening, but we just don't really know. And uh, let's see, uh, there's a Bitcoin flip, this is uh, Lynn Alden in the news. Let's see, access by, so I'm just skimming the news here. We'll get into some of these headlines. Um, we'll get come back to this. Let me check on Crypto Panic, a great news aggregator here. And let's see, uh, Do Kwan avoids extradition to US for now. Uh, not really news, opposes blockchain associate lobby. I don't see a lot of big news in the uh, market today, so we can spend more time on some of the uh, charts here again we've got uh this is interesting solana makes history flips ethereum and on the dex is a decentralized exchange probably uniswap let's see and open that up uh, let's see it looks like lark davis a uh, friend of the channel here has uh, in this article i thought i saw that in the uh, pre-headline uh, solana flipping ethereum on dex 24-hour trading volume Let's see which DEX, I guess, is important, but uh, it doesn't say. Let's see. Yeah, here, Lark Davis uh, shared on Twitter. It's a lot of flipped Ethereum on another metric. So that's interesting. I interviewed Lark for our Future of Crypto Summit and um, may be re-releasing that in January. So with maybe a few extra speakers. So keep an eye out for that. We'll let you know. Let's see, uh, well, just looking for which exchange, not a huge deal, but um, it's important because our contention is 
And uh, we share this with a few other people that Solana really could be and should be worth 20% of ETH in the long run. So if ETH hits 15K, Solana could hit 3K, and that's a pretty nice upside from the $75 it was trading at last night. So uh, let's continue to see this. And uh, surge DEX activity of Solana, cheap cost. You know, I will just add too that Helium has been on a tear. Helium coin, one of our favorites that I recommended back in July of 2021. That came down just just shy over a dollar. I was waiting to load up on helium uh, at a dollar. Didn't quite get there, but of course they got beat down because they abandoned their own blockchain and moved over to the Solana blockchain. But uh, that, in the long run, I think is going to be a wise move. And of course, helium. The news last week or so is that they're partnering with T-Mobile to offer mobile services. So very important. Keep an eye on helium. We will watch that today. And I think that's the okay airdrops pipe the pith network. There's some caves okay, on okay. All right, well that's all we need to see there. I'll close that and we'll take a look at the uh, daily hodl. And <clears throat> so, uh, a good old friend of mine, John Nigerian. I used to uh, have seminars in Orlando called the Investor Super Conference, and uh, Dr. J was uh, one of my speakers. Got a great photo uh, I'll share with you guys of me and Dr. J getting interviewed there at the event. Uh, it was a who's who of uh, People like Steve Nissan and Jake Bernstein. And uh, I don't know if you guys know Tim Sykes. I was, uh, I discovered Tim Sykes. He was one of our speakers there when he was brand, brand new and uh, for fairly green in the market, but uh, he's done very well with himself for himself there. So let's look at that. So Bitcoin, I thought uh, John was not talking about Bitcoin because they had some, uh, well, I won't get into it. Now, my old office manager works for, for John uh, that used to work for me. So I'll have to get the scoop. Crypto trader issues XRP alert. XRP has been going sideways for years, it seems like. I don't think I want to talk about that. Uh, whale abruptly moves over $234 million in Bitcoin. Yeah, what's, you know, what's, so it's uh, $234 million. Uh, we couldn't have made it $235 million, but uh, what's a million dollars among friends? From 40,000, here's where the crypto is going. I kind of want to know that. That'd be interesting. Uh, okay, I, so the analyst, whoever this analyst is, there's millions of them, uh, unveils max pain scenario for Bitcoin and crypto never witnessed the secular bear market. This is true, but um, I don't think we're there yet. Avalanche, potential rally and Fetch AI. Okay, I like this Fetch. We just recommended Fetch to our members in our M3 Active Trader uh, just two days ago. Or was it yesterday? Might have been yesterday. Fetch AI looks great. AVAX, of course, did a deal with Amazon not too long ago. Last, it was uh, in the bear market, um, but you're going to start seeing more and more of these big name companies doing deals. A lot of building happens in the bear markets. Remember that. All right. So, okay, 60% altcoin. Mm, and decentralized. I wonder if this is about helium. Under the radar altcoin surges 60% among network expansion. That sounds a bit high, but it's on the Solana uh, ecosystem. So, with some demand for uh, mobile, so we'll look at that. Uh, okay, plan B. Could send Bitcoin flying to a new all-time high in four months. So I agree with this. We'll look at this too. I've been saying, and I have a scenario where we get to 100,000 Bitcoin by the halving, if not higher. And I'll show you that chart. It's in our M3 Active Trader charts uh, that we do tomorrow. But um, well, I'll pull it up for you today. All right. That is about... Uh, well, this is interesting. Coinbase says crypto industry super PAC has raised over 78 million to help elect friendly candidates in the U.S. Not many of them. We've got Cynthia Loomis. We've got RFK Jr. I don't know. Um, I like a lot of what he says, but he's a little bit out there now. Uh, so, you know, we'll have to wait and see. And of course, uh, Trump does not like uh, crypto. Biden administration does not like crypto. So we're not quite there yet. But at any rate, awareness is coming. All right. Uh, why would uh, veteran Peter Brandt saying ETH crash 70%? Well, we do have our work cut us out, cut out for us today uh, in the news. <clears throat> All right, let's get into it. So a lot of price technicals hint to 40% crash. So they're saying 40%, someone else saying bigger. Uh, well, let's see. Lacks the underlying momentum required to continue its bull rung. This guy is full of it. Baloney. I don't know. This. Uh, let's go back. Let's just take a look at Solana. This chart looks beautiful, you guys. Let me jump to a better one with some of our indicators on it. And uh, this, of course, Bitcoin having the pullback we've been expecting 
in a take profit week, but I want to just show Solana. So it is, it has surged a bit and, but we've got, uh, let me turn on the EMAs just since we're talking about it. It, it could pull back to $50. That's not that big of a pullback, but let's see. You know, well, okay, it is actually 40%. So, okay, I see what he's saying. And, uh, okay, it's funny. We have the moon phases indicator on here. I don't know how it got on there, but we were watching that back in the 2021 market, and there was some interesting, uh, but I'm going to get rid of it. Uh, we're not going to look at the moon phases indicator, you guys. Don't worry. Uh, I will pull up the Ichimoku real quick just for my own curiosity. But what I'm looking at here, what I like is that we've come up. This crossover here on Solana is very bullish. Okay, the crossover of the 21 week over the 50 week EMA, very bullish here. We've But it just surged so high. We had four weeks, five weeks, a little bit of a pullback. We've had a massive run up on Solana. So, all right. Well, you know what? I, I take that back. That guy might be right. I think forty percent it would be would be uh, good for Solana because we've we went up three hundred percent since our early reversal indicator signaled it was a buy back in September eighteenth, the week of September eighteenth, and of course our TSI and other indicators also confirmed. So this is a good lesson here. When we uh, have all these aligned, let's just jump over to our uh, trusty uh, trade success checklist, which I believe is here, and you guys can get this at. Uh, moonstream.io i believe it is just checklist and uh, let's hopefully that's it moonstream.io slash checklist if that's not it you can find it at moonstream.io at the bottom but that's what it is moonstream.io slash checklist just uh, give us your info and we'll send it to you and what it is it's a cheat sheet for how to know when to get into trades so uh, if you're using our indicators, uh, there are also some that are, are just on based on other moving averages, but really your best chance, trust me, I've been trading 25 years and uh, these are the best indicators I've ever used. We've built them to be so. So is the ERI, the early reversal indicator showing a green up arrow? All right, that's what we just looked at. So when you click that checkbox, it starts giving you a score. Your trading success score is one out of 19. Now we have a new version of this somewhere, uh, and uh, it's, this one's a little blurry. If you go download that, you'll get the new version, by the way, much clearer than this one. And uh, we're always updating that, so that's good news. So, and then going back to that chart, so you guys can see this, where were we on uh, Solana here? So we had that early reversal indicator. Let's see, fourth tab in. All right, so see this green arrow there? We had that. And then we have this going from red to green. That's our trend strength indicator. So once that happened, we had uh, we had this thing go live here. And I had to just close up something in the other window there. So basically, uh, where did it go? We are here, here, or here. Right. So we have the TSI going green. Check. So now we have a score of two of 19 and has the signal line turn from red to green. It has, that's this indicator here these are different algorithms all looking at different things so when this crosses that's a, another bullish uh, event to get into that trade potentially so now we have a score of three out of 19 and then we have what we call the four kings when we also get a bell indicator here and if it's the green line down below it now we should have a score of five out of 19 great score on this trade and of course, this is this uh, trend indicator. This is where it almost looks like Mario Brothers is going to come running out, grabbing all the coins. And it's almost as fun as and more profitable because when we get the bell, the key says, hey, we have a new trend forming potentially. And you see this green arrow and the bell is the confirmation, confirmation, the confirming indicator to get into the trade. And so then we have a number series with the bag of money as the take profit week, the take profit signal. You can use these on daily, weekly, all time frames. OK, so when you have all four, we call it the four kings. And how do we get on render token? Sorry, you guys got uh, but they're all looking good there um fourth tab over i'm sorry so we have the eri we had this tsi and the very similar charts on these with solano though we are in a new bell sequence and this usually means we're, we're up we're going to go up for a few more weeks on this not always but high probability the trend indicator indicates that, you know it's going to continue on in the longer term so this is a multi-week multi-time period indicator i would say at least a few more weeks of upside if we do get a pullback on solana it should be short-lived could it come down 40 percent to the 21 and the 50-day ema it sure could but that would be an excellent buying opportunity because as we know though and i wouldn't count on it 
when I called and picked Solana August 1st of 2021. That was our coin pick in the Moonstream newsletter, and we nailed it. So I said to people that we would pull back here. Let me see if this even goes back that far. It just barely does on Coinbase. I said, uh, guys, let's uh, buy Solana on a pullback to 35. We were trading at about 37. I had a feeling it would pull back in here. We bought it at 35 and we sold it up in this region, but we didn't get a pullback until all the way up here. And then we got a little pullback. But I, my point is, don't expect a pullback on Solana. A lot of good momentum behind it, regardless of what this guy says. This thing can run like a spaceship and never turn back. So, so much so that we have our own new indicator called the rocket on the launch pad that we've just programmed. And uh, it's pretty rare. I'll show it to you. I don't have it on the chart here, but I will show it to you because uh, we've just added it to the new uh, Trader Success Worksheet. And actually, Myrene, if you could drop in, maybe you already have the, uh, I see somebody sharing some uh, news here. Uh, Alex saying about the rocket on the BTC yesterday. We'll look at that. Alex KS saying some more Solana based hype. Okay, sure. We'll check that out. And I have to copy paste it because some reason my browser won't open clickable links. And uh, for that new checklist, you know what? Let's see. I'm going to assume that we have the new one loaded here and uh, maybe just download uh, the new one. Although, you know what? I know I do have it saved. So bear with me for a second. I'm going to open up the new checklist because that has the rocket on it. And that way we can look at the latest version. But uh, if you go to moonstream.io slash checklist, you can get this uh, the new version of that. All right. So... I need to just find this here, and it's in the uh, trading uh, checklist. Uh, where is this? Uh, I'm in the right one. PDFs. I've got to go dig for it, you guys. Bear with me for one second. And uh, always a little nerve-wracking when you're live. And maybe it's in the Crypto Mastery folder. Uh, you know, I tell you what, it will be worth the wait. So just stay with me here. So the uh, checklist, where is that thing? And, yeah, somebody gave. Here it is. I found it. All right, ready? <clears throat> I'm opening that up as we speak. All right, so this will be on your screen momentarily. So we, we're still coding this up, and I think there is a newer version of it. This is the uh, the, the dirty version of it. But um, now that doesn't mean it's adult version. It's not PG-13. It is just the, the dirty version. What is this thing here? Okay, we have, um, this is it. It'll be coded pretty like the other one. And soon enough, but here's the new version of it with the clearer signals. So we've got the TSI, the ERI, and the rocket. I'll go back to the other one. I just want to show you the rocket on the launch pad. So the rocket on the launch pad is here. And uh, this indicates this pattern where this is a discovery we made where the real body is sitting on a 21 or 50 day EMA or a trend line where that means this sort of open is there. It has a wick down below it, but closes near the high. And typically we call it the rocket on the launch pad because if you consider this is the rocket fuel and this is the fuse. If you've ever lit, lit off a bottle rocket when you were a kid or in the Boy Scouts have the rockets there. You go out and shoot them off on the weekend, uh, mostly a boy's activity, but the rocket sits on the launch pad. You light the ignition and it shoots up into the sky. This is what we've been seeing. And one of our favorite indicators, when we see this, everyone gets excited because the rocket indicates lots of buying pressure coming in. So now we've coded that. So little rocket forms when those are on the uh, launch pad. So that is now a, a new crypto mastery indicator that we're releasing soon. Some of you have beta access to it and also some new features like these buy blocks showing order flow and uh, some new patterns like the ins three inside up, our radar, our average true range and some other patterns we'll look at, including some advanced, uh, more advanced uh, topics indicators all right or setups so basically with this though you can come in and say uh if you don't know, even if you don't have our indicators you can look for bullish engulfing candles you can look for is the candle body above moving average support is the price above the 21 and 50 day ema breaking above resistance volatility index is one of our other other indicators so now we have a score of nine out of 19 rarely will you get it that high or need to get that high Okay, but we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves and we still want to get back to the news. And fourth tab in is Solana. So here we go. So that person was saying 40% pullback. 
All right, we talked about that. Yeah, well, it's not a crash. A 40% pullback is not a crash. This is some clickbait here. But basically, that would take us down to support. And he makes it sound very scary, but like it is a bit extended. So 40% from where we are today could pull us back down into these ranges. But I don't think it goes down that far. And that would be on a weekly basis. So I still think he's wrong. I think we could pull back. Solana's riding its 21-day EMA very nicely, though. So what I would say is if it breaks above 78 and can hold above 78, I have an, I'm going to put an alert there. Then, then we're fine and we're going higher. But let's unpack this a little bit more and see what our indicators are telling us. It is a bit overbought on our TSI. I'll turn on the uh, ERI, which is uh, the early reversal indicator. So what this means specifically is if we start breaking down below this 80 level uh, and below this 80 level here, then that would be a signal that it's and it's starting to try to do that. See how, it, see that red is just trying to trigger? Solana may be looking to pull back here today. As we can see, when we get that red signal and it confirms by going below the 80 line, then we usually get a continuation. So look for Solana to pull back here on a daily basis, potentially. But I don't know. Here's the thing. This is a hard one because we've got our strict signal going down in red. But you have to look at this, though. You have to look at this 21-day EMA riding it so nicely. If I were in Solana, here's what I would do specifically. I would, uh, by the way, I did just buy some. Uh, in my IRA. So I'll um, we'll look at this. It, my stop loss is going to be right below like 68. Why? That's that 21-day exponential moving average. It's having some trouble here at the $78 level. A reminder, it's gone up 300%. Uh, our ERI and signals and TSI nailed it right back here, though. And uh, we saw that happen as early as back in September. And on the weekly basis, it's more clear. So nailed it right there to the week back in September. So, you know, like a bit of a pullback would be a good thing on Solano. All right. So we've covered that. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, let's see, they're looking at relative strength. You don't need these other indicators like RSI because typically that's essentially what our trend indicator is doing, the trend strength indicator. And that is a better version of the RSI. And it's got some other quant stuff inside of it. Okay, so seeing that crossover, it is overbought. Uh, but, you know, look, sometimes if it gets a pullback, I wouldn't necessarily assume it's going to pull all the way back to this line. It it might, but not all the way down. It's still in an upward number sequence. Solana could go either way. So that uh, analyst here is a bit of a guess. A wag, as you will. A wild-ass guess. So, um, you know... Uh, this is a volume, you know, a bit of bearish divergence, but I think it powers through. I think Solana is strong enough that it can get back up. If it can get above that $78 level, it'll keep on going higher. If it breaks below 78 and goes down again below, some of you just joined below what I just said on the daily basis, which is right around here, this on the daily 68, that would be my stop loss. So we'll set an alert, maybe a bit lower. I'd say 65 would be a good stop. You see, you have these wicks down here. You know, these you don't want to get stopped out uh, on a uh, kind of a stop hunt, right? So I'll just do 64, 75, even get below that round number. That would be my stop loss because there is some support here. And um, if it gets below that, then maybe it goes lower short term. Had a big run. Let's finish off the news. How are we doing on time? 30 minutes in. Let's uh, pick this up a bit. So um, it did, but Solana flips Ethereum on the trading volume. So there's bullish and bearish signaling there. We'll see. Uh, let's see, Tether preparing. I think we've got enough headlines. Let's keep going. Bitcoin will surge by 30% in two days on the back of this catalyst. According to John Jarian, again, old friend of mine. Um, oh, where's that picture? I've got it right around here. I'll have to show you next week. Me and John go way back. Uh, Dr. J, great guy. He came to my uh, company Christmas party when I had uh, well, had the options university down in Boca Raton. Uh, John flew down and attended our Christmas party. Nice guy. All right. So why? Let's find out why he says this. Uh, John's a smart guy too. So what's the catalyst that we think will come out of this? So we said again, Dr. J saying we could see a thirty percent move. Um, well, of course, it's the <laughs> <laughs> He's not always a cutting edge on the news. Of course, it's on the BlackRock ETFs, so nothing surprising there. We've already unpacked that. Uh, he says, however, he warns. Okay, so let's. He warns we could dip in the 37k range. I don't think so. I 38k maybe. I'll show you why. We won't go to 37k. I don't believe. But let's see. Um, 
uh, however he wore. So he's taken both sides of this, but he says people are getting ahead of that and he thinks we'll go back down. All right. So there is a CMB gap down there. I think we need to look at that. But uh, 38K is where we come down. And I'm recommending to my private clients, we would buy back in, buy the dip around 39K. You know, it could come down to 38.5, 37, I don't think so. All right, seems like charts has to have so much difficulty in the upside. Uh, well, we'll look at that. Let's take a look at that here. And uh, no, But good to hear John's back on the crypto train because I had a private conversation with his office manager who he hired uh, for me. Um, uh, when I sold the Options University, so all friendly, but uh, I won't mention her name. But she said, John, it was staying away from crypto last time I saw her down in Florida. So he's a proponent. I like that. Way to go, John. I'll have to reach out to him. I chatted with John on uh, WhatsApp when uh, he was uh, he was over in Switzerland, I think he was. Okay. Um, so he's uh, anti Liz Warren. Good. And it doesn't have to be billionaires, cents, millionaires that need Bitcoin. Awful lot of people need it, especially want to force digital dollar on those. So, so this is good. Maybe I can get on uh, Fast Money with uh, Dr. J there. I need to reach out to him, uh, touch base, catch up. Okay, well, let's take a look at that real quick, though. We talked about Solana in terms of Bitcoin. Why would he say 37K? Uh, you know, I mean, that's down in the mix. If we put the VWAP on... That could be where it lines up. But uh, what I'm seeing, I think 38K would be the bottom there. <clears throat> VWAP is a volume weighted average price. Haven't looked at that in a while. Uh, this is also known as the fixed range volume profile. So, you know, if we zoom out, let me turn off our ERI so you guys can, I don't have to look at all that spaghetti. Maybe do this on a weekly basis because this is typically how you draw this and see where the majority of the volume was so i mean to, you know this would take us down we still have just so we know we still have an unfilled cme gap right down around 20k and this is also that same level right around here for the volume weighted average price do i think we get there i do not I do not so let's redraw this just to see if we can duplicate where and why he's saying oh let's go to the bottom here not to look for lines in the sand but you know what i don't Basically, what he's looking at, excuse me, is uh, all of this difficulty getting above 37K, kind of this mix here. But I don't look at that. Let me open this up so you can see what I see. Uh, we have this nice bottoming pattern. Now, this green arrow, by the way, I've had drawn on there for weeks and weeks. So uh, the we were right on that. I'm going to leave it there. I'll move it out of the way, but uh, we drew that here a while ago. So uh, we did push up to this upper trend channel, like I've been saying, or seeing this pullback, like I've been expecting. We're at the 21-day EMA, which is holding, kind of topping out. If we go down from here, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing because we want to come down here. And again, this 38th K region. See, John's looking in the mix down here, um, and, and John's a smart guy. I'm not saying he's not, but here's what I think. Uh, we had... whoops. We had this uh, this resistance flipped as support. It needs to come down and retest this as support, and then we can go higher. And that's right around 38K. All right, if we do drop down, we have still, we have the 50-day EMA coming up. So this is a support zone and a buy-the-dip zone. I don't think we see 37K again uh, in the near term. All right, I think we go higher, and I think we're going to 48K, 50K. You guys know why. That's the Bitcoin, uh, the golden pocket, Fibonacci golden pocket. So a little bit of a dip here. This is where I'd be buying everybody, right in this range, 38K to 40K. I don't think we go back below this 38K level. Uh, strong resistance turns to strong support. Now, if we do, we're still in an upward trending channel, though. All right, so that would be your indication. Dollar cost average, where if we do come down, uh, worst case scenario, this never retested right here at the 32K region. So, you know, look, uh, we could certainly come down in the uptrending channel. So these are both DCA zones, but I just think people are going to push it higher going into the uh, ETF and then we'll see some sell pressure and a, and a bigger dip. All right, let's see if there's any comments in the chat. Uh, let's see. I'm just skimming. Which company do you use for your IRA? I use iTrust Capital. Perry uh, moved over from uh, E-Trade. Um, took a little while, a couple weeks, but uh, real easy to uh, buy. They've got a good selection of coins there as well. So pretty simple. And, uh, you know, it's not for active trading. It's for buy and hold, but I've got mostly ETH and Solana there. Why is Solana so hot? Future usage. 
Well, Perry, I, I mean, I'm not sure if you joined late, uh, but um, the original narrative on Solana and why we were recommending it back in August of 2021, honestly, was the chart was looking good. But their claim to fame was that they were able to do 50,000 transactions per second. It was something like that. It was a big number. And that was right back in here. So that was the narrative that this is going to be a huge payment rail that can disrupt MasterCard, Visa, et cetera, et cetera. You know, a lot of what drives prices, especially in bull runs, are the narratives that people are told in that, uh, you know, may or may not come true. So we had this massive run up. They're also venture backed. So keep that in mind. Andreessen Horowitz uh, and a lot of the big players uh, in Solana. And so that drove a lot of speculation. I do like venture-backed projects, more likely to succeed, smarter people they can hire, more money, less likely to run out of money and developers in the bear market. However, they did run into some issues with the DDoS attacks, took down the network somewhere in this region. And so like the rest of the market, it sold off. But the reason Solana is so hot now is they have their own NFTs that have launched, although they, they launched a while ago. We were... Those of you that have been around a while and were part of Moonstream, we participated in a minting of a Solana-based NFT called Decentralians. They're these cool little alien NFTs, uh, and they were super cheap. They were like 17 sol uh, each back then, or 1.7. Anyway, holding 10 of those. Um, so they have their NFT network, and they've got a strong blockchain. They've sorted out the DDoS attacks. They're going to be a strong competitor in the payment rails space. But keep in mind, there are other competitors like Metis and uh, of course, you know, Zcash and a number of other ones. But Solana, a lot of good things happening there. Again, people are saying Solana could be worth 15%, 20% of ETH. My targets on ETH are 3,000. So that put, I'm sorry, at 15,000, that puts Solana potentially at 3,000. And I'll show you a chart there. Uh, we unpack that every week in the Active Trader class. Again, if you're interested in more in-depth analysis like we do here, less news, more in-depth trading, you can find out more about that in our Moonstream M3 Active Trader class. We just released this and closed it down, but we're kind of leaving it up here. We've got some new monthly options where you get daily access to me and Signal. We do a live weekly class like this one, a little deeper dive, and you get uh, the indicators included. So you can find out more about that here at uh, moonstream.io. Also some cool checklists, members area videos uh, and trainings on other tools that we use to really maximize profits in these uh, markets. So you can learn more about that there. And there's me, of course, at the Bitcoin conference, wearing my M3 crypto hat. When you sign up, you get a hat, but you know what? They sent us the wrong hats. So we have to get more of these. They sent us the inner circle hats that we have. All right, enough about that for now. Let's dive into and back into the charts. Um, just checking some chat here, you guys. Um, yeah, so Perry says moon phases. There is an indicator called the moon phases indicator. Um, maybe if you're, we'll pull it up at the end. There are some interesting similarities there that we were noticing in the 2021 run and in 2022 when everyone was like, uh, the market's gone crazy. And there was an interesting correlation where when there was a full moon, markets would go down and then a new moon, markets would go up. Uh, not financial advice. Not financial advice. It was kind of fun to pull it up. Uh, let's see. So Amir says, has the bull run of crypto started? Yes, Amir. It started a while ago and uh, we've been nailing it. I mean, it started a year ago, uh, December of 2022, right down in here where I was saying when we launched M3 Crypto, that it's time to get in. I released the Blood in Their Streets report. People thought I was crazy. And of course, we went up 100% in Bitcoin from there. So the bull run is in full swing. Uh, currently, uh, we are, that's on Bitcoin, but currently we're in like phase two, I believe, because if you look at it, we have a giant cup and handle here with the breakout being recently. So if you draw the cup and the handle breakout here above that 32K level, we were watching that very carefully. And I've been saying when we break 32 and hold, we're going much higher. And I believe we're going to that 48K, 50K range. Again, uh, that is, let me see where that chart is, the, the Fib Golden Pocket. I know I have it on here. This is something else that's interesting we're not gonna talk about today, but uh, Let's see, where is my, I'll redraw it if I have to. Uh, you mostly have it on the other charts here. So let's just redraw that since I'm on the topic. 
and I'll open this up for you. If you're not familiar with the Fibonacci Golden Pocket, it is the 0.618 to the 0.65 zone. And here it is. So if we draw the Fibonacci from the market cycle high, now how did it get way up there? And down to the market cycle low and go over to the side. Yeah, somehow it got moved out of the way accidentally. But right in this little wedge, if you look look here, the 0.618 is at 48,000 and the 0.65 is at 50,000. So this is where we're going next. I think we pull back first. This is a weekly basis. I think we pull back. But uh, if we start pushing higher, you know, again, this is this buy zone right down in here. Not financial advice, but these buy zone that uh, uptrending channel in this pullback zone around 38K, could be 39, but then we push up here and I think we'll hit 50. If we hit 48, we'll hit 50 on a uh, uh, wick. If you put sell orders in at 50K Bitcoin, I do think we get a pullback there. Maybe it's back to the midpoint of the channel, but then we go higher and then we go back. I think we break new highs by uh, the halving. And I think we could hit 100K by the halving. I know, but I'm not the only one who thinks so. And I think we go much higher. Okay, so uh, with that in mind, but also look at this. The other reason we do need to pull back at some point, and we have the 21 and 50 weeks. When we get this extended above that 21 week, it's kind of like we've bounced as high as we can. We need to come back down and land on that trampoline and bounce again. These things don't go up forever, although... We did see that back in here and in tomorrow's class, you guys know I have the scenario and the 10 things that could happen could ignite this giant massive bull run. Think of it as 10 small campfires. If any one of them flares up, they're all next to each other. It could ignite all of them. And I think that there's a reasonably good chance, if not a high likelihood that that does happen. So join us for tomorrow's class to learn more about that. Uh, if you're not an M3 Active Trader yet, just go to uh, moonstream.io slash M3. You can read all about that. New monthly options, and you get the indicators free. Great deal. Best deal out on crypto right now, I promise you. Uh, many active traders here with us live. Okay, you guys, uh, where were we? I'm going to finish the news just to see. Uh, let's see. This is a two days. So John's saying 30-day surge if BlackRock, when BlackRock gets approved. So where would that put us if that happened? Let's say we get the pullback going into early January. And, you know, that, would, that surge would take us right to the top of this trend channel. So no big big uh, thing there and that would take us to the top of the golden pocket too so that is actually a pretty likely scenario let's say we pull back over the next this week next week into the buy zone here and then january 8th is right around the corner that is when people are saying that it'll happen mark yusko says january 8th is the day let's just look at this here puts us right about here. So that would make sense to me, you guys. We pull down into this zone. People are a little afraid. You know, we could spike sooner to get ahead of it, but I think that's this surge has been getting ahead of it. So we sell off, we sell off, come down here. Bitcoin ETF is approved, shoots up here in a big candle up to the top of this zone, hits 50K. That's a take profit area. Uh, sell the news event. That's what I think. All right, we'll see. I've been right a lot. We'll see what happens, you guys. Uh, and so... Let's see, a checklist there you can get, links in the chat. We talked about Solana, we talked about IRA. Uh, Bob says, anyone familiar with the Trust app? I'm not familiar with it, if you wanna put it in the chat. Uh, let's see, doesn't CNBC tell the public? Yeah, that's Perry, exactly. Well, CNBC is always late. When I was a degenerate day trader uh, for a period of time, across the river here from where I live now, years and years ago, we we would call it the Joe Kernan effect because Joe Kernan would come on. I can't believe he's still on team. He's been around forever. He would come on and say, everyone, after the break, we're going to talk about a biotech stock that's doing some cool things in epigenetics or whatever. So during commercial, we would all jump on and research to find out what he was going to be talking about as day traders around the world would do, we'd go in and we'd, we'd figure it out and we'd buy that or buy a couple of them in that industry. And then sure enough, when Joe came back and talked about it on the news, uh, you know, the, the dumb money or the retail traders kicking back on their lazy boy watching CNBC saying, hmm, I, I think I should buy some of that. Meanwhile, all of us, the day traders were dumping into the, pri the price uh, pop. Hey, it is what it is. I, I no longer do that. You'll have you. I'll have you know, uh, partially because I was a terrible day trader. Uh, I had built up my account from three thousand to sixty thousand, uh, and uh, swing trading, which is what I'm very good at, 
and uh, decided to go be a day trader and, um, and sat next to a guy that was very good. But invariably, when I was buying, trying to copy him, he was selling it back to me. I lost, uh, turned 60,000 into six. That's the wrong way, by the way. And uh, then I turned to option trading and um, founded a, a very successful option trading education company. So there you go. Part of the path, how I landed here. At any rate, uh, that's covered that. We've covered that. Let's see. Whale moves 23, 40 million in Bitcoin as I don't know. We want to unpack this. Uh, you know, these whale, these get moved around. This could have been Binance. Um, let's see. It says receiving wallet holds his 37th richest Bitcoin. Well, Bitcoin info charts. You just can't really unpack a lot of these money moving around Bitcoin. So we're not going to look at it. Analyst unveils max pain scenario. Let's just unpack this a little bit and see where this uh, could take us. Uh, pseudonymous trader, um, whoever. Uh, 365. Okay. And um, we, everyone, yeah. So basically, he's saying that the all time highs pre having while everyone fades the 40 to 50K, and then they think it's a massive dump into a five year mega bear post having. Um, you know, he's not wrong. How would that make the most pain for the most people? Because everyone's expecting that. So, you, you know, there's certainly uh, an argument for a massive run up going into the having and then a big dump. So we will see and we'll trust our indicators because our indicators, I know you might not believe this, but they follow the footsteps of the whales and the smart money especially the early reversal indicator, which was an accidental discovery, but has been all, have been uncannily very good. I'm not sure if that's a word. It's been uncanny how good it has been, especially on the weekly time frame. Daily here, we had a bullish ERI, bullish ERI. Now, what does it actually mean? If I pull up the oscillator version of it, which is hidden because it's no fun to look at, it essentially tells us when the uh, the bigger money is buying. Okay, so these arrows are not printed by us, and uh, it's it's best on the monthly for the uh, the bottoms and weekly on the tops. So basically, when we hide the diagrams or the drawings here, those of you in M three Trader know that we we nailed the uh, bottom on uh, Bitcoin, and it's uh, what is the deal here? It is. On the other charts, something's uh, wonky here, but it triggered January. This vertical green line is the, the ERI. Okay, so I'll open this up. This vertical green line signaled to get back into the markets last January, and everyone thought we were crazy, but we were, that's when we got back in. Okay, and then the confirmation is the TSI going green, followed by the signal line, the key, and the bell. And that basically, again, follows the footsteps of the, uh, the whales and the smart money and the institutions and everyone else. I will turn the radar on, by the way. We're mixed on the radar on the monthly basis. Uh, when it's all green is go. When it's all red, it's time to get out. So we'll know when the top is. When our radar goes all red, we'll know. And we also will be looking for a couple other things in terms of our uh, other indicators here. But, um, you know, I'm seeing a bullish signal here on the dynamic ATR, by the way. We're seeing a, a flip here. The last time this happened, when it goes yellow, it's about to turn on a macro basis. This is very interesting from a, an exit zone to an entry zone. So we, we want to see where this candle flips, if it can flip on a monthly basis. But look at this nice bottoming pattern, the 21 month rounding along right above the 50 month EMA. I think we're still bullish, you guys. So going into the having, pushing hard. And then from there, we'll have to see. You know, we'll be watching our other signals to know when to get out, um, which, which have been right. We called on the weekly time frame. Uh, the the tops on all of these and so on Bitcoin especially so right back in here and here and all those confirmed so we'll look at that in a bit let's see CNBC Telepublic we talked about that Helium is now riding on Solana KS yeah we talked about that K uh, Helium now on the Solana blockchain as of uh, this past year running like crazy love Helium great project just announced mobile it's up six percent in a sea of red look at that Helium unstoppable needs to come back down look if it comes down back down to five you guys uh i'm going to set an alert on five i'll be buying more um my, my personal goal is just you know or i won't say recommend recommendation if you let's just say if you have a thousand helium 
and it costs you 5000 If that happens and it goes back up to the old highs around, uh, you know, 50, I think helium goes to 100, uh, even 1,000 long term. This is a real use case project. Kind of red on the radar here. A pullback to these zones would be ideal pullback for helium coin to go higher. Um, all right. Did I catch up on everything on the chat? Uh, Alex has a parallel trend channel. Yep, you can tell who my N3 students are. They're uh, catching on. They uh, they know what to look for. Somewhat self-fulfilling. Once a trend starts, you'll see trends. Yeah, so the trend is your friend until it isn't. That's what we do here. We try to identify or we, we do identify new trend channels as soon as we can because then we just ride the trend channels. Um, what about ADA? Uh, yeah, we'll look at ADA. You know, it's a slow-moving battleship, Glenn. It used to stand for at a dollar always, but uh, even that uh, hasn't holds true. Uh, not hating on uh, ADA. I just think it, they're moving so slow. They risk getting run over and steamrolled, but uh, we can look at ADA. Let's see. Is uh, Amir says, is the Ethereum Golden Cross formed? Um, let's take a look at that. I don't spend a lot of time looking at the Golden Cross. You know, I do like this cup and handle breakout on the weekly. You know, it's retesting this thing. ETH has to kind of hold this level and retest a hold this 2140 line, this handle pattern. If it comes down, it still has a 21 and 50 week down below. If you want to look at uh, the Golden Cross, the, that's a 50 over the 200. So I'd have to add that. There's an indicator in here for it. I don't watch it very often, but because I haven't seen that, you know, it doesn't usually um, plan out that much, that well. It's kind of lagging. The uh, Golden Cross here, it has, um, let me turn off my EMAs so we don't get confused. And uh, where's the other one? So this this is a, a wonky version of the Golden Cross. Let me get rid of that. And let's find it again. Golden. Otherwise, we'll rebuild it the hard way. Uh, the Golden Cross here, and there's a couple versions of it. I'll just go with this one. Yeah, of course, they chose the most hideous colors possible. So we'll change this back under here. Um, the plot line. Why would you choose? Uh, they, they did it because most people use dark charts. I get it. Uh, I'm a bit of a I don't I don't like the dark charts. They make my eyes hurt after two while. I like these uh, uh, the light charts. What do you guys think? Here, Golden Cross right down here. It's been a bit of a chop, but that's not really what I pay attention to, uh, to be honest, Amir. Some people use it. I, I told you what I'm looking at. This cup and handle breaking down, retesting this prior resistance at 2135. If you draw that prior re support resistance out, you know, it's more of a, a zone. I mean, a lot of times they, they don't, they're not exact lines. It's back in here. It could come back down to test 2000. You know, that would be reasonable, this area. But now that we're back above 2000, come back and retest that. I think that's more um, important than the Golden Cross on this. And plus we have in our indicators, the early reversal indicator, plus a bullish engulfing candle back here. You know, it, uh, it's run up quite a bit. It's due for some kind of a pullback, but we nailed this 50% move with the indicators there uh, and again look guys hear me now if you aren't using our crypto mastery indicators they're the best i've used in 25 years of training we've created these i accidentally discovered the early reversal indicator but when these four align it's like 90 percent plus 95 percent. okay so especially on a weekly basis let me just show it to you so the eri is i'll turn off the diagrams this arrow here if if you're a bit of a more experienced trader what does it mean it's not just a bullish engulfing candle it's uh it's based on this oscillator now this is an advanced oscillator it's a modified stochastics yes the colors on the midline are depending on a keltner channel that you can't see but i can turn back on and the pattern is when it comes off of the zero line or below the 5% line back above 20 in three time periods. Okay. Don't ask me why I just, this is a pattern I noticed accidental discovery, but it's been so good. You guys within three time periods, and that's the trigger for the ERI. Now, the we use the ERI in combination with the TSI. So if you're joining us late, our secret weapon is using this trade success checklist, which you can get free over at moonstream.io slash checklist. Okay, you can download this. 
and stay with me. And then when you see the ERI showing up, this here, that, that arrow, and the TSI goes red, red to green and above 20, those two alone are like 90, 95% accurate. When you layer in the, the signal line and then the trend indicator showing a bell, it just increases the odds. And so that's why we created that trade success checklist. And so you can see this, we call it the four kings, the uh, arrow here, let me hide this, it's the same thing. Well, I tell you, what, since I said I'd show you, on the ERI, uh, not the oscillator, but the arrow version, if I turn this on, the Keltner's channel is now there. But you don't need to know that. It's not that important, okay? There's, there's, there's lots of math and quant stuff going on behind the scenes. Joe is a, our programmer partner. He's a quant engineer. He's a mad scientist. He has automated trading systems on the futures going off all day long. Uh, this guy's a real deal, okay? So we've had him simplify the complicated. Einstein said genius is in making the complicated simple. He's done that. That being said, we're getting a bearish ERI here on the weekly for ETH starting to form, and this is starting to roll over. So I think we see a bit of a pullback on ETH here and uh, short term, but um, you know that's what we use. So you can find out more about those indicators, by the way, at, at cryptomastery.org. But you can see here when these arrows line up with the TSI, boom, 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 very, very good. And then also you get these other indicators. So you can read about there. You can pay monthly for those, just those alone. If you're more experienced on reading charts, it's great. If you want to do more of the training with me Wednesdays and get the indicators, go over to moonstream.io slash M3. And that's our highest level training here that uh, you can read about. Okay. Sorry, guys. Not, you know, I don't mean to bore you with commercials, but if you want to succeed in these markets, you need these tools. And the M3 members that are here will tell you and swear by these. And also, if you go all the way to the bottom, there's pages of, of testimonials from people that uh, are in these classes. We, just, we there's more, there's pages more we could put up. We haven't had time. All right, um, let me get through these. Uh, Golden Cross, Bitcoin Lightning Network. Perry says was counter to the alt times climbing higher. Um, you know, Lightning Network certainly, Perry is uh, going to be impactful. But uh, there's still the Bitcoin congestion, you know, with ordinals and all of these other things. Bitcoin's trying to be too much to too many people. And even Michael Saylor said recently, and, um, you know, or was it Saylor? I think it was Saylor or one of those, uh, someone it might have been Saylor or somebody else saying that, look, it's, it's definitely a store of value, uh, but the transactional side is is maybe not the best use case. You know, we need to see the Bitcoin Lightning Network get out there more more use uh you know i did see jack mallers at the bitcoin conference two two years ago go into a convenience store buy a six pack of beer and then separately some coke using uh the lightning network over the tour uh network through strike so it's there last year he said we are now in 65 countries tied into the one of the major payment rails already so it is coming but the transactions per second is the big question mark. Um, so I don't know. That's a good uh, good comment, you know, and I think there's going to be use case for each. Solana, also a good blockchain, though. I think there's a there's a good use case for both of them. And I um, saw an article recently that thinks Solana, you know, Solana could be top three ahead of ETH at some point. I don't know. We'll have to see. And uh, But a lot of people clamoring for that higher transactions time per unit, like there's Metis, there's a number of others. Keep an eye on Metis, by the way. Not financial advice, but it's uh, founded by a friend of Vitalik's mother's. His mother is on the board. So at some point, we're going to see some M&A in these, uh, these markets. And so meaning bigger companies buying other companies. So what if Ethereum wanted to get into the transaction game? Don't you think Metis might be at the top of the list to do a deal and maybe acquire it? So that's where we're going to see things really get interesting. What does Google do now that they own the internet? They have been buying, they basically buy patents and they buy other countries, uh, con <laughs> companies, probably countries too. Um, maybe that was a Freudian slip. But uh, anyway, let's go on.
A uh, long post here by KS here, if you want to read that, not so much counter to the altcoin anti-Bitcoin high transaction cost narrative, but to deal with very high transaction cost processing time. Okay, exactly as I was saying. Um, KS is uh, one of our M3 members, so thanks for that. Uh, that's great comment there. Lightning is an L2 solution for Bitcoin, similar to what Polygon and other L2s are doing for Ethereum. Right, Bitcoin's layer, sorry, Solana's layer one, I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I should know that. But Lightning is L2 solution for Bitcoin, talked about that um and there's a lot of there's l3s too you know keep in mind there are other competing platforms like zk snarks zk rollups on polygon you know these will all compete with transaction speeds so it's going to be interesting to see who wins in the end uh ks says right now there's no blockchain network that has a distribution robustness of the bitcoin network distributed ledger exactly right massive network network effect in place uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, read the Bitcoin standard. Uh, it's a it's a long, boring read, but you should definitely read it. All right. Uh, lots of comments, guys. Great. Great to have you. This article, Perry says the inverse uh, inverse yeah, <laughs> Jim Cramer inverse Jim Cramer ETF lets investors bet against CNBC anchor stock picks. That's hilarious. Um, he has just been the worst at uh, picking, uh, you know, coins, uh, stocks rather. I don't know. Look, you know what? It is what it is. He's an entertainment value host. Uh, this page isn't loading for me, but um, here we have... Did I lose you guys? Uh, I've, I have I have to be aware I have... Okay, good. I'm just worried I might lose internet here. Well, let's see. New York Post is a lot of clickbait here, so we're not going to spend too much time here. But that is funny. Um, anyway, ETFs, Kramer's uh, picks launched... Uh, it should link to Kramer stock picks. Total, okay. Well, like, you know, <clears throat> that's funny. No, unpack that. We have some links in the chat for these different services we offer. What Perry says, then we'll get back to the charts and look at some hot movers. When are people going to care about privacy and Monero goes mainstream? Yeah, I, I mean, Monero is a bit of a challenge for the feds. They don't want there to be privacy. That's why one of our old picks and favorites, uh, Haven Coin, got hammered because of the, uh, you know, they just, um, uh, the scrutiny there. XMR, when, you know, the, it it's, has risk if the feds want to come and just crush it. Uh, wait, this is uh, exit XLM. Monero is... Yeah, it's XMR. I pulled up the wrong one for some reason. Uh, I was like, that chart is worse than I thought it would be. Okay, so, but look, uh, it's it's putting in higher lows. I don't think XMR is going to race to the top anytime soon. But, um, hey, look, I would put an alert on it. It's already up around 200. That's part of the reason, too, it's not as popular, even though you don't need to own a whole Bitcoin or a whole Monero XMR coin. The, the more expensive coins, the perception is... This thing has to go up a lot for me to make money. And so I'll put an alert on it and watch it. But uh, yeah, you know, it's just that whole privacy coin thing uh, has been uh, has been out of favor. So even Haven, which runs on on Monero, um, we loved uh, we loved this prior to be uh, back back a year you know, two years ago. This was a great coin really got crushed here. We caught this bounce, by the way. And we caught this 100% bounce and I thought we would get another 100% bounce, but it just, it, then it rolled over and died. And that was part of that uh, high of Haven coin, part of that privacy targeting and people afraid they were just shut it down. Uh, okay, oh, pirate chain got rug pulled. Uh Oh, pirate chain. Well, we've been saying this may be a dead project. There wasn't a lot of development on it. Let me see. I know I've got pirate chain in the list. Let's see. Uh, we definitely will say R together if it did. Uh, not now, a couple years ago. Well, I mean, look, I mean, we made Pirate Chain was one of our picks years ago. We did very well with that. One of our testimonials, somebody said, uh, I've never had a higher net worth. But yeah, you know, the, the, it, it didn't have a lot of fundamental value. It's very thinly traded. Uh, it's been kind of inching higher recently but not enough. I have alerts on Pirate Chain at 25 cents. And if it gets to 35 cents above the 50-day EMA, 50-week EMA, I'd buy it. I mean, you know, it's just one of those fun projects in a raging bull market. People like to pump it up. I mean, it's down 95% or more, I'm sure. 95%, uh, good guess. 
Well, hey, look, that's a good lottery ticket. Where can you buy it? You can buy it on a Trade Ogre uh, and crypto. Not a not a recommendation to buy or sell, but hey, it's just fun to own some pirate chain. Um, yeah, or one of our members, Pirate J, uh, has gone incognito. Yeah, where's Pirate J? We haven't seen him in a while. Maybe he'll be on M3 Trader class tomorrow because uh, we need some intel. On that last we heard, he thought that it would go to 10 cents in one final capitulation and then people would buy it. So, hey, you never know. I'll put an alert down here. I don't like to catch a falling knife, but uh, I'll put this as, as alert and just say bye. Pirate chain. OK, let's do this. Um, yeah, they do have good privacy in design. It's too bad. Pirate chain. Uh, all right, you guys, let's do this. Uh, I'm going to jump over to our crypto mastery list. And I think we unpacked the news pretty well. Uh, let's see. We've got some um, avalanche. Let's talk about Fetch AI really quickly. Um, and Fetch has a great looking chart. We did recommend that to our members in the last few days. So uh, then I would need to, I've got my AI coins at the top of the list for AI coins. Well, holy cow. Hold uh, hold my beer. What is this? Data USD up 100%. Uh, what's the deal with this? This it's on KuCoin though, you guys. This is a margin pump. Don't buy this. Don't chase these. Uh, wait to see where the close. If it closes, most more than likely, and you guys know this, if it gets above the Bollinger Band that far, our modified Bollinger Band, this is gonna this will sell off. Uh, but I saw hundred percent. I was like, whoa, this is going on here. Fetch uh, AI though is a great project. Um, uh, the do we like the chart? Let's see. I'm trying to turn off the Bollinger Bands. This is a, a weekly time frame, you know, cup and handle, big handle there. But I like this kind of pattern indicates equilibrium. Buyers are in control. We did put a buy alert on that uh, just yesterday and the day before. I'm not sure exactly when. We're in an entry zone, our dynamic ATR indicator, uh, one of our favorites. So fetch uh, looking good. What's the news on fetch? Let's see. Uh, where were we? Where did uh, focus altcoin fetch? Predicting rallies for smart contracts, Avalanche. We do like Avalanche and AI focused altcoin fetch. Uh, is not. So he says, this person's saying AVAX not done rallying. We can take a look at that. Um, it's had a good push though. I'd wait for probably a pullback. But you don't know, the, in this first, second phase of the bull market, phase two, you know, these things don't pull back as much. So fetch, uh, it's not really telling us a lot about that. Um, and I don't know why Beam, what, I just heard about Beam recently. What's, uh, I think Elio was talking about that. Not sure. I don't really get into gaming tokens just yet. I like Immutable X, Optimism. We can look at those if you want to. Uh, this is uh, under the radar altcoin. Um, I thought this might be Helium because look at that. Well, that was a good guess, wasn't it, you guys? We saw the headline, under the radar altcoin surges 60% amid network expansion and explosive demand for Solana smartphone. Boom, nailed it. Uh, there we go. Helium is the uh, the reason why. And uh, we love Helium. We've been, I've got my miner in the corner churning out. My, my Helium miner name is Burnt Cauliflower Goat. Yeah, uh, I didn't make that up, obviously. But um Sudden surge comes as a Helium mobile project announced earlier this week. So we just thought Helium was going to power the Internet of Things, let your toaster and your uh, your refrigerator communicate to your neighbors and tell you when you need more milk. Uh, they've just launched a, a mobile phone network with T-Mobile. Huge use case. Mark my words, this will be a big project. So Helium mobile, let's see, $20 smartphone, right? So um, you know who also rolled out a $20 a month smartphone and then got bought out by, I think, a billion dollars from T-Mobile? Mint Mobile, remember Ryan Reynolds and the Mint commercials? That was their plan. So this is uh, something I may look into, switching over to Helium plan on T-Mobile, allegedly the largest 5G network. Uh, you know, who knows? I can't really verify these things. Um, I like I like AT&T myself, but at any rate. Uh, so, um, and the saga, the saga, I guess is the name of the phone sold out. Cool. All right. Well, that, that sells a lot about internet. Uh, I'm sorry, crypto adoption. Um, that's good news. All right. Let's get through the news quick. Catalyst could send Bitcoin flying all new time high, according to quant analyst plan B. He's one of the better ones and has an interesting video out about, you know, how, we could see a resurgence above the plan B stock to flow model. 
We didn't quite hit it in the high of the last bull run, but remember in prior bull runs, price went above the stock to flow model and that could see us at much higher prices. I was watching that uh, yesterday. So uh, let's see what he has to say and see if we can't highlight this. Uh, what does he say? They're having a new possible lifetime high would be 69K, right? Um, and um, so I don't know if I want to get into this. I saw a somewhat disturbing plan um hmm, path where the next high could only might only be eighty thousand, but that is uh in con sharp contrast to where what my analysis shows where i think we go 150k to 210 so somewhere in that range there's also people saying million dollar bitcoin uh this year so in 2024 uh crazy crazy times you guys uh we just don't know but he says um he thinks uh New all-time highs by the halving. I think that's. I think we go to 100k by the halving, and that's certainly possible. If you come tomorrow to our M3 class, we'll talk about the campfire theory. There's ten smoldering fires. Any one of them, if they ignite, will all of them will catch up and go up. I believe, and that'll be a huge rally for Bitcoin, and uh, with no looking back. I think that's an outlier, which also could be a max pain scenario for the shorts. So and called a cause a melt up. Uh, we'll see. I reserve the right to be wrong. You Nobody knows. Uh, so the ETF, he says, um, everyone's looking at January. If it gets approved, we'll have... Uh, how, yeah, he, say, he says 100K too. So plan B and I, we're going to go for beers later because we're on the same page. Uh, I don't know him, but um, I was. he was saying 69K. I was saying 100K. Simple reason, the 100K is exactly the 1.618 Fibonacci retracement from the low to the high. The 155K is the 2.618, and my $210,000 target is the 3.618, but it's also the measured move of the macro bear fl bull flag. I'm sorry, the macro bull flag that we are entering into. So uh, I'm putting my chips on 155K and 210. We'll see if I'm right. All right, so um, he's saying something about a black swan event, something we do not expect like the last halving 2020 because we had COVID. And uh, the he talks about, he says, even a short-term bearish scenario below 25K uh, won't fall below. Yeah, I don't think we go below 25K. You know, there is that uh, CME gap, but it's it's just so small. We also have one below 10K. We're never, we're not going down there. I don't believe that's that's West never happening. All right. Um, I think we're getting bored of the news. Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, here's one more news. The veteran trip. Peter Brandt issues Ethereum alert. We do want to talk about this. Could crash up to 70%. What is he talking about? If, if ETH were to crash 70%, Let's just go back here and take a look at ETH. Where does he get these numbers? Uh, let's take a look at what that would be on a price basis if we were to go 70% down. I think he's smoking something ahead of the holidays. So 70% here uh, would be to 715. No. What? I can't even imagine where we get this kind of, let's see here, some kind of fib retracement. No, this guy's, this guy's, uh, He's he's smoking some Christmas tree there. Um, I don't know, you guys. Let's see. Uh, he's Peter Brett's a smart guy though. So, but right here he says sacred charts are not textbooks. So he's already he's already saying <laughs> they fail to perform all the time. If the rising wedge in Ethereum complies with the script, a target is a thousand and six fifty. Uh, what script? I don't know. This isn't happening, you guys. Uh, he shorted ETH on Friday. What is he seeing here? Okay, so a rising wedge. I see a cup and handle breakout. It's a sloppy one. It is, you know, the handle is maybe a bit long. Uh, the set, the head and shoulders back here, I did call that also on Bitcoin. You can find it on TradingView. I, I was right about that. And smart traders thought we were going higher. So the head and shoulders we got, we came down here. We have the ascending triangle. You know, I mean, uh, we will see the wedge, but I just, um, I'm feeling we go higher, you know, so we'll, we'll see. We'll keep an eye on that. Good to know and park it in, in the realm of possibility. All right. Let's see. I want to turn a couple of these off. I'm going to go over to, these are from a week ago or so. 
And uh, we'll, we get into, by the way, we get into looking at the DXY and uh, Bitcoin dominance, all of that in tomorrow's class. That's the crypto, sorry, the Moonstream M3 crypto class. You can find out more about what we do at moonstream.io, by the way. No matter what level trader you are, if you're brand new to all this, Blockchain Bottom Line is a great place to start. 100 lessons or so, short digestible lessons. Our newsletter is a once a month newsletter with a coin pick every month. Some of these have gone up 18,525%, like Phantom Coin in 2021. January of 2021, we re-recommended it. Uh, went up 18,525%. Also recommended Helium and Solana in that summertime, as well as Polygon. So uh, we're good at what we do. Crypto Mastery are the indicators we're talking about today. M3 Active Traders tomorrow. We have a Retire Rich course, which is looking at emerging markets and uh, and coins that have come down, 90, you know, distressed assets, more longer term hold. And then we do have some coaching mentoring. You can find out more about that at moonstream.io. Okay, let's look at the crypto market gainers, you guys, and let's see what we can find. I'll just refresh this to make sure it's up to date. Just check over on the chat. We have the, all right, so um, yeah, I mean, but uh, I wouldn't call it a God candle, Perry, uh, on the uh, what we just looked at. That's what's a pump and dump. Um, that, that'll come back down to earth, I promise you. So uh, let's see. So um, yeah, Perry, that's kind of, I, I, I do watch him, and that's uh, kind of what he came up with. So I'm going to show you why I think that's not going to happen. But it was certainly interesting if it plays out, his, the 5.3 metric. Uh, so credit to uh, Steve over there for, but I don't know. I, I don't want to, you know, I don't like to turn people on to other people's analysis because what I have in the past has been wrong. If, if I'm going to steer you in the wrong direction, I'm going to give you my analysis. And I haven't been wrong much. I won't say I've never been wrong, but I've been right way more. I called the bottom in July of 2021. Our indicators did to the day into the week. Also was telling people to get into cash September, October, November, December of 2021. In January of 2022, I was saying, get into cash, get out of these markets. And uh, that was before the crash. And then December of 2023, sorry, 2022, it seems like so long ago. Uh, get back in the markets exactly a year ago. So, uh, and I also predicted 16.5 would be the low uh, and uh, did that publicly on Facebook. So anyway, hey, um, you know, even a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while, but I've been I've been right a lot. So uh, there's also other people out there, you know, that with Fibonacci circles and all kinds of craziness that have wrecked more traders than anybody I know. So be careful who you're paying attention to. I trust our indicators and 25 years of of, of uh, expert judgment. And Perry says, I like people that are right. You're in the right place. People that are here will tell you I've been right. Uh, not to brag, but they're calling me Crypto Domus. And so, um, you know what it is? It's the 10,000 hours of looking at these charts. Been doing this since 1998 when E-Trade was a green screen and a flashing cursor. Kid you not, I was... Swing trading Netscape on E-Trade when it was a green screen and a flashing cursor and uh, have been doing it ever since. The other thing are, are indicators and a little bit of spidey sense. Not going to lie. You, you know, you need that time in the markets to sort of have that uh, overall edge. Now, I will say I was wrong. I had a, I was in a major massive short in February of 2022. Uh, technically, it was right. Got uh, whipsawed on a very manipulated short squeeze. So uh, these are dangerous markets, you guys. And uh, yeah, I took a six-figure lesson there, but that's how you learn. Uh, anyway, uh, but we're back. We're back. Uh, all good. The expensive lessons are the best ones. And I'm not here to say I've never been wrong and never lost anything. We all lose money in trading. It's how we handle those, how we take stop losses and stick to the discipline, but also know when to get in on the stronger signals and chart setups. All right, a little bit of a, not a lecture, you guys. I Probably some very smart traders on here. I know many of you are in the M3 group and um, know, uh, know a lot. I'm not saying I know everything. Just most everything. I'm just kidding. All right, let's look at streamer here on the daily movers. Now, um, keep in mind on these, a lot of times if they are on a margin trading platform or thinly traded, you know, they're manipulated, but let's look at, well, here's the one we looked at. Data streamer is the one that we just looked at that was up 100%. It's distributed computing and storage. Let's look at that again, you guys. 
The reason is, you know, we like Filecoin. Those of you in our programs, you know, we like storage. This sector is going to be strong. It's the most profitable sector that Amazon has, the AWS. So if I load up my uh, charts cheat sheet that I want for my dailies, let's see my swing trading, uh, which one, the top crypto mastery indicators, right? So here's where often I'll make a judgment and then look to see how I was wrong or if I was wrong. What are we looking for here, you guys? So we have our signal line screen. Now we have our trend strength indicator overbought. I would say on a weekly basis, though, the crossover here potentially is bullish. I think streamer is one to add to our watch list because I, I wouldn't buy it here because it's on crypto.com and it's on the it's extending the three standard deviation Bollinger band. That is our version uh, modifying the standard Bollinger bands. And this is where we usually take profits. I'd wait for a pullback here. Let's look at it uh, on the daily chart as well. So the reason these candles are off color is because our vol index down here is in play. Uh, we'll go back to the weekly. Our vol index is a great signal though. Uh, and when it comes out of the red zone, it's not very often, these are the best buy points here. So if we go back here to March of 2020, we'll look at that called the COVID, wait, sorry, wrong year. Was that right? 2020. Yeah, that was the COVID crash. So this vol index nailed the COVID crash bounce on the vol index on streamer better on the more prominent coins, but it works great in all of these uh, better on bigger coins. And then it, um, and then it was wrong right here. So much for my, uh, my theory. Yeah, it works. It, it's more right, right more often on the Bitcoin, Ethereum and bigger ones. So streamer, you know, a bit, it's one to watch. I wouldn't go all in on this, uh, you know, certainly a hundred percent up in a day, but uh, we'll see how it closes. And you know what I'm going to do here? I'm just going to add that to our watch list inside of there. Okay. So, and it'll put it into the M3 Active Trader list. We'll put it into our storage. So there's a couple other competitors there. So um, anyway, we'll close that off. Uh, I wouldn't buy it here. Interesting to know. Put it on our radar, like we said. All right. What else do we have? SEI. Um, what is the volume circling supply? One. 2.3 billion. How have I never heard of this? What do they do? Development tools, layer one. Kind of boring. Retail probably won't get behind it. Let's see what it looks like on the chart. We're not going to do all of these. Uh, it's a good chance. All right, this is brand new. Um, yeah, let's not look at it. You can't, there's not enough buy history. It's in price discovery zone. It's pushing higher. This will likely dump. Uh, let's not uh, talk about that one there. Let's see Elastos. Uh, 20 million, kind of low, smart contracts, Web3. We'll give it a quick look. This We have found some good gems this way, like ATOR, before it went up 100% plus. Uh, we It landed on the hot movers there a while back. This, um, you know, it's just this chart is kind of ho-hum. We have this very long wick, very low volume, uh, thinly traded. You can tell by these, these topping tails. So this isn't one we want to pay attention to. So we're kind of ruling things out. Let's just kind of skim through these, see if we know any distributed computing and storage. So here's another competitor to Filecoin storage and uh, streamer that we just looked at. So here maybe you want to keep an eye on. Let's see what the chart. Show me the chart. I'll tell you the news. So this whole sector is surging, it looks like. Uh, and uh, it's already run, but I, I liked, I'm going to add it to, not an alert, I'm going to add it. To, I do like these sectors. When we were day trading back in the day trading days, we would wait for the, the tier ones. Let's see Yahoo and Google were flying. We would start buying the tier twos and even the tier threes because they would run after the main ones would start to run. All right, so I'm going to add this to a couple of these watch lists here to keep an eye on this. Uh, it's already had a big move. I would not chase this. So, uh, But I will put it on the radar for future pullbacks to know about it because sometimes you never know. Balance finance governance token. Not very excited about governance tokens. GuildFi, gaming marketplace, 512 million supply volume. Um, you know, slightly low on the volume. Let's look at GuildFi. And then uh, we'll skim through. I see Gala. Let's see. That's not Gala Games, though. Uh, I see Teller down on the list. So anything you guys want me to see? I'm sorry. We'll look at ADA for the gentleman who asked for that. And then we'll kind of wrap things up here soonish. Guildfy, interesting chart, but um, we've missed the move on this. 
uh, right into resistance zone. Uh, what do they do? I, I'm not really sure. Um, I, I don't, I'll, I'll put it in the back of my mind. I'm not going to really put a lot of energy into that one. Uh, let's go to ADA. I did forget to get to that. Somebody had asked for ADA. Uh, we do talk about more coins, by the way, and um, our buy list in the M3 class tomorrow. So here's ADA. Um, if the gentleman's still here, what I like about this is the 21 and 50 week are about to cross. Okay, I, I probably will pull back here if we put on the Bollinger Band. Um, you know, it's due for a pullback. If you can buy it at 42 cents, even better, maybe 45 cents. But uh, if we get this broad market pullback that I'm expecting, you know, a buy, this is the buy spot on this. I'll turn off the Bollingers. Uh, I'll put on the Ichimoku briefly. Um, I put a buy signal here, the Tinken crossing, the Kijin and uh, and all that, but um, not really getting into this, like, the Ichimokus. I have to get my game face on to start using Ichimoku again. It's just so visually, it's a lot. It's a lot to look at. Let's look at our dynamic ATR. Our ATR is going green. And then if we open up my other indicators here, it's a bit overbought on the weekly. Again, waiting for a pullback, red on the radar. Uh, I'd wait for a pullback on this. The only, the most bullish thing that I see is a sort of riding the uh, 21 day EMA, but um, you know, long term, ADA, not a bad one, uh, just not one of my favorites. Because even if it goes back to the old highs, this is the barometer I use. I mean, it's it's not even a 10x here because uh, if it goes to three dollars, it's a 5x. Why why invest in a 5x when there's things like Filecoin that could 40x Solana that could uh, 50? Let me make sure I I was. If Solana hits three thousand, it could fifty x. That's the thing, you guys. And um, where is this chart? Uh, I have a better chart of it somewhere. Let me find this. And uh, where's that one? That'll fifty x. Well, you can see I've got lots of levels in here, but let's just do it this way. If Solana goes to fifty, this is the ugliest chart ever. I have a much better one. I just don't know where it is to 3000 like if it goes to tw if it's 20% of eth it's a 37x because it's come up we've been we've been watching it since it was going to be a 50x down in here uh not saying it has to but i think it could i think it could and solana you know look if you draw this these are not just lines in the sand what do you you know we could certainly this is a very wide trend channel debatable that's a very wide trend channel a macro trend channel but I'd put my money in Solana uh, more than ADA personally. But if you've been holding it for a while, hey, why not? Hold on to it. Uh, we are seeing a bit of a broad market sell-off, which we've been expecting for weeks, everybody. Uh, not a big deal. And let me jump back to a daily. You know, we're been looking at some of these here. I, IMX, AVAX, you know, look, it's pullback time based on the Bitcoin, but hey, what is up also of today? What is going on here with the files? Something's up. Storage is up 38%. Great. This is one of our picks in our retire rich class. I own storage. Great product. You know, so it's just a matter of time. The handwriting is on the walls for these cloud storage companies. The reason is, the reason is all these AI companies that are hugely data intensive need a place to put all that AI data. If you've ever used ChatGPT, it requires immense computing power. Well, they don't want to put their decentralized exchange data on a centralized company like Amazon. Let's say the government calls up Jeff Bezos and say, hey, we need all the data. Uh, so the whole premise of these AI coins and taken tokens is to keep that privacy and remain decentralized. So what are we seeing? We're starting to see uh, pick up on these uh, other cloud storage companies. So I'd love to see this storage pushing higher uh, and, um, you know, where, what I'm looking for specifically storage is really a good one to, uh, not financial advice, you know, but just look, we like this project. That's a prior moonstream pick. And, uh, once it gets up to $4, we're in price discovery zone, everyone. And that's what things get really fun. And the price, you know, that's when the market makers don't have any resistance levels. They just let the price go until people stop buying it and it can pump like crazy. So, um, let me zoom out and make sure, but you know, from here to three dollars, it's a three x uh, storage. Though, I like that upward trending channel. All right, what else do we have? Um, yeah, I know Perry. I was trading E Trade before a lot of these YouTubers were born. Thanks uh, 
further reminder that I'm old as dirt, but um, yeah, I've been, I've been doing this a long time. And, you know, and I still go back to some of the earliest patterns, like the cup and handle. What does it mean? That means buyers, sellers in equilibrium. And it's just sort of, you see it break above, buyers are in control. I don't have one handy here, uh, but, uh, you know, simple trend lines. I'm not going to use like Elliott waves and all that stuff. Maybe there's a place for it. I find it unnecessary, especially with the indicators that we have, which are the best that I've ever used. Um, let's see, comment from, uh, so compound could go 70X, you know, compound, yeah. Chain link, also I uh, like chain link. If we zoom out on this, uh, it's not necessarily a 70X, but look at this. We had this nice consolidation. We used to call this gas in the tank, something I learned a long time ago at a telescan seminar. I don't think they even make that software anymore. The longer it goes sideways, that's gas in the tank. When it breaks out, that's more fuel for it to go higher. If we want to look at this to the old highs, where does it go for uh, chain link? I don't know. This is the, the best chart. I thought I had a higher target on it, but this is at least a three X, but uh, potentially, you know, here's the thing though. These are great tier one projects, chain link compound. If we go to where it could go up in here, 85 X potential on chain link, call me crazy, but uh, this is definitely possible compound. Let's take a look at how we see 70 X. I've got charts on these somewhere and I don't know where, where they went. They're in my, uh, in the active trader class tomorrow. We'll have those saved, but you know, sure enough, um, well, 17 X on compound. And if we draw a similar, a similar trend channel though, into new higher zones like this, let me grab it over here. Certainly could do 70 X up in that range. So that's how you can get those numbers. And, and the nice thing about this compound is it hasn't broken out of the, the gas in the tank. Look at all that gas in the tank, you guys. When it does break out, it's gonna, it'll go pretty quickly. Now, we this this everything is within the context of the whole market and if everything sells off. But uh, yeah, thanks for that. Um, well, compound, let's see. Uh, let's go back a bit. It's Coinbase isn't going to have the longest history on compound. So let's go back. Let's say Bitfinex. Yeah. Okay. So I had, I was, I was, uh, well, that just further reinforces to the old all time high. I don't know though. Where's, uh, how long has it been? That's only back to 2021. Let's see if Bitrix has it for longer. Uh, no. What uh, chart are you? I guess we could pull it up on Coin Market Cap. I'm not going to spend all day on this. Um, Perry, yeah, I don't know on Compound if it's 70x, but uh, but it could still based on that projection I gave. So you know, it's still 13 to 15x beats a sharp stick in the eye. But um, you know, th this scenario we could see the 70x. This is uh, you know uh, all the way up here could be even more. Well, if it goes back up here, we're looking at 600X. 70X is going to be... Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. It's about in here. Anyway, but I think it could go up here. That's not out of the reach. Um, possibility or the realm of possibility. Um, so Perry says deep brain chain. We were looking at deep brain. It's just you can't buy it anywhere. Uh, that was one of them was going to be one of our retire pick retire rich picks, but deep brain cool project. But where do you buy it? Uh, crypto.com, gate IO, you know, Uniswap, maybe, uh, I guess, sure, Bitmart, Uniswap. All right, well, we could do that, but most of us are in the US and aren't trading on these uh, other offshore exchanges. So, um, you know, that's the thing with deep brain, and so, um, Chainlink only 3x all time high. I get it, but Chainlink could go much higher, as I showed. Uh, let's see, BTA, LPT. <clears throat> what is LPT again? It's like a lipid, lipid, no, uh, LPT. I was trading that in 2021. I can't remember what it is, the real name, uh, was really called, but, um, you know, look, a lot of speculation could go this, could do that, sure. Uh, chart's not terribly exciting to me right here. Our indicators uh, are, are all over the place. Let's just kind of do this, guys. I want to share some more about the indicators that we have. If you trade the four hour and the one hour, um, these are great entry zones. And for trading on this one hour chart here, I love the TSI and ERI for those of you that are trying to get optimal entries. So you can see how these oscillate so nicely. If we put on the uh, ERI chart here, um, I think that usually I'm using that on the four hour, but um, 
uh, depending on your time frame, right? And the AT the ATR is great on this one hour chart, so you can see kind of been zigzagging, but um, we caught a nice entry down here on the Bitcoin. And uh, let's see, let's look at the four hour, which is one I like more for longer term trading. So I'll I'll make my decisions on daily charts and weekly, but I'll time them with a four hour sometimes. And uh, I have a, an alert set that is on uh, repeat for our indicators when the ATR goes to entry, when uh, also when we get um, the uh, TSI going green and the uh, there was one other one that I had on there. I think it was this vol index. So. Um, yeah, thanks, Perry. The indicators, look, I'm not here to sell indicators. We built them to be the best. Uh, you know, the best is kind of an ego driven thing. So I don't want to say that, but they're the best I've used. And they certainly work well with other indicators. So I'll tell you this if you're not using the crypto mastery indicators, you're at a disadvantage. Uh, that I will I will tell you. So here, for example, and you can test me on this. ERI, we're getting a bearish ERI and we're getting a bearish TSI. So on the four hour, we've got a little bit more downside. Uh, when we cross below the 80 line, it's going to continue down for a bit. Now, this candle has an hour and 22 minutes to close. So it still could bounce out of there. You always go by the candle close by the period that you're in. The only uh, caveat there is that the new version of the ERI has this green block of buying pressure. So we're in some chop right now on Bitcoin. It's just going sideways. Uh, I'm not going to make a uh, major market call on it, but um, you know, these do work on the shorter time frame too. Uh, if you do day trade, uh, there were days, a couple days, one day I tripled my account day trading Bitcoin, shorting it, just looking at the one minute, three minute, 15 and one hour using moving averages and the ERI TSI. Uh, we don't teach uh, day trading. What happened there? We don't teach day trading. Uh, we started a sniper trader class. Too dangerous, you guys. Uh, we might dabble in that later. Uh, this chart here is, I don't know why. I, that chart looks a little bit strange. Um, here is the the my Bitcoin projections, by the way. How did I draw this? This looks, uh, by the way, join us tomorrow for... What in the world is this? Oh, that was sort of a short-term class. This, I have much better charts on these longer term. We do look at macro in the other class. I'm going to delete this because it's just confusing for everybody. And um, I was, yeah, here's where I was playing around with the uh, head and shoulders back in 2021. Somehow this older, much older chart got loaded. Uh, and I think that's because I loaded some of the uh, chart setups up here. But um, anything else you guys want to look at, by the way? Uh, GRT, I'm not going to look at uh, the graph. The thing is that the graph is a good example of a narrative that they sell us on as the graph is the Google of the crypto blockchain sphere because they're going to map everything. Well, everyone piled into it. I you know, always lost money on the graph when we were trading it in 2021. And uh, I think the problem is they don't have a monetization model. There's nothing that novel or new about it. I'll keep an eye on the graph. But I think people are buying in just to the moniker Google of crypto. And to me, that isn't enough. It just really never lived up to the hype uh, in the last uh, cycle. So, uh, you know, look, I reserve the right to be wrong. It's it's bounced, but um, it's kind of a janky chart here. It's got to clear this level to be even worth my time. So, but look, hey, you know, anything can happen. So that's why we set our alerts. And uh, just on that note here, let's talk about alerts for a second. Because one of the best things to do with the indicators that we have is to set alerts on them. So for example, if we want to set another alert here on the ERI, you can right click on that, add an alert on the ERI. And I want to know when it turns to green and next next green arrow, boom. And you can do it once per bar close. I'm not gonna do that because it'll happen too often. On a weekly time frame. I would. You can also go into the trend indicator uh, or the uh, trend strength indicator rather. And uh, this is the older version of it. But, um, and then the uh, trend indicator here where we get the key in the bell. So you can, all of our indicators, you can add alerts on them. So if you wanna know the next time you get the buy signal, the bell, you can do that. And you can do a once per bar close. 
open-ended and then you just say uh bell uh bitcoin bell daily buy question mark exclamation point so that way you know when your alert goes off what, what you were thinking when you said it all right you guys so uh, we can take a quick look at total market cap we unpack that more tomorrow um and let's do that save it for tomorrow we look at bitcoin dominance ustt dominance um we see some money flowing into stable coins. Nothing really going on today. Uh, total market cap holding 1.5 trillion, and uh, not a whole lot happening. But love to see helium up, all, up almost to nine dollars, you guys. So we've been killing it with helium. We've been dead on. I we we called it back in here, and uh, got a bit lucky with that mobile news, but. Uh, we love the uh, look at all these buy blocks. This is buy pressure, you guys. Uh, this, this is the ERI Pro Helium's going higher. I, there's a sell. One of our sell targets is at 11. And if I put the Bollinger Band on, we would. I would probably take some profits at 11, right in this range. But I don't know. This could be the new Solana that just keeps going. So anyway, you guys, uh, thanks for being here. Uh, any comments on meme coins? You know, we don't really follow them. I was watching Pepe coin for a while and bonk, but uh, they're super dangerous uh, and uh, they pump and then they crash. So yeah, Pepe had its run. It's just going sideways. If you want to know when it's, if it runs again, just do this, set an alert over the prior sort of high level there. So if you get an alert just above that line and your alert goes off, you could jump on some Pepe for a day trade. But uh, hey, you know, it's a 50-50, it's a toss up. So we don't really trade meme coins. That's not what we do. Our indicators are, you know, based on uh, solid human emotion. There has to be a large enough pool of people to make them effective, if that makes sense. And uh, so anyway, uh, that's about all we have time for today. We do go deeper tomorrow's class. Again, you can go over to crypto sorry, cryptomastery.org for these indicators. You can get a month free if you sign up for the six month deal. And so that would be four ninety seven for six months. So uh, you get that first month free, or you can pay ninety seven dollars a month, or two ninety seven quarterly. Look, fully guaranteed. If you're not using these, you need these. We do these classes every week where we show you guys how to use them and do trainings. And there's a members area with video training on them. So if you're buying other indicators, uh, there's other ones out there that are no, nowhere near as good that cost twice as much. So uh, uh, get a hold of these, try them out, learn these. You'll never look back. And if you want to get them free, just go over to moonstream.io slash M3 for our M3 Active Trader class. You can read all the feedback testimonials from people with pages and pages of them and more if you want to see them. And all the tools, you get weekly classes, you get daily access to me in a chat room. I'm posting in there every day, trade alerts, charts, news, uh, I'm digesting hours and hours of content every day so you don't have to. And uh, sharing that with what's relevant in here. And uh, it's just, uh, and I've been doing this a long time. I won't tell you, won't bore you with the details. I was flown out to be part of Crypto Revealed's uh, documentary a couple of years ago. And it was on the same episode as uh, Robert Kiyosaki, Peter Schiff, and our good friend uh, Max Wright. So you can learn more about that here. Click this big yellow button. Uh, hey, Perry, it's great. Great to have your uh, enthusiasm and engagement. Some people are shy and are just sitting on the fly on the wall, but uh, glad you enjoyed it. Thank you for your comments. And I uh, would love to have you at the Moonstream M3 Crypto. Um, you, it's $297 a month with the indicators, $249 a month without. But again, daily commentary and chat. You can ask me any questions there and the weekly class, which is again tomorrow, and uh, other cool stuff that I kind of leak out to, you know, beta tester stuff to the M3. Uh, those are my peeps. Those are my, That's my private group where you get the best. But anyway, thanks, everybody. Glad you could make it. Thank you for all your comments. And if you're on YouTube watching this, uh, just hit like for me. It helps the algorithms and subscribe. We're going to some point start doing these live, I think, but uh, we haven't figured out the tech yet. I'm a, I'm a trader techno dunce. Uh, so um, not exactly, but we'll, we'll get there everybody. And we look forward to seeing you on the live stream. Maybe we'll try that out here before the end of the year. Okay, everybody, I'll uh, let you go and I'll just give you a quick wave here on the camera. And uh, well, a good bunch of you stuck around to the end. Uh, good to see you guys. 
All right, everyone. We'll see you next Tuesday. Same time. We're just inviting everyone to join us and um, don't be left out without the indicators. Big moves coming, you guys. We're going to talk about why. I'll show you the 10 reasons why in tomorrow's class. So uh, if you want to join us for M3 Active Trader, hey, look, it's fully guaranteed. Try it out. Um, if you don't like it for any reason at all, happy to give your money back. All right. And yeah, Alex, thanks. Alex saying, hope you're in M3. The good stuff is there. Uh, Alex, uh, one of our reactive uh, traders as well. So, okay, you guys. Well, that is all I have time for. I'm just going to hit a quick uh, button there, screen capture, and um, capture that comment. That was a good one. <clears throat> but anyway, we'll let you go, everyone. Take care. Uh, we'll see you next week. And many of you will see tomorrow. If you're in our Retire Rich classes, we'll see you Thursday. So there you go. We have something for everybody. All right, everybody. Take care.